I get asked all the time, which ETF is your favorite? If you had to choose just one forever, which one would it be? Recently, Dario asked, if you had to choose one from SCHD and QQQM to key in on in your early 20s, which one would it be? While both of those are easily in the running for my top ETF, I wanted to make a video and provide you with much more value. Well, yes, I'm gonna share what my favorite and number one ETF would be, but also how I got there and why I picked that one so that you could make your own selection and pick whichever one works best for you. Each investor should be investing based off their own set of goals and factors that's unique to each person. So never just invest in something just because someone else invests in it. For each ETF that I talk about, I'll classify it as far as total return potential, volatility, overall risk, and just one or two main reasons why I really like the ETF. For all the ETFs that I talk about in this video, I like them all and I hold most of them in at least one of my investing accounts. Now, if I'm gonna pick just one ETF that I get to invest in forever, then I personally wouldn't want it to be like a specialty ETF or a sector ETF. I would want it to be more of like a broad index ETF since it's the only one that I get to invest in. A sector ETF just kind of sticks within its same sector, so something like health care or banking or even technology. So for this video, I won't be talking about those, but if you are interested, I did make a video on my favorite 8.5 specialty ETF. So I'll link to that in the description below for you to watch later on. But my first category for this video is international. And this one makes the list because of the political climate we're in with stuff like the debt ceiling coming into play. If the US does default at some point, or at least needs to heavily start paying this debt back, it would make a lot of sense to have exposure in emerging markets or just in companies that are outside of the United States. For this, I like both VXUS and SCHY. Both have a solid dividend yield and both are made up of companies entirely outside the United States, so international only. As far as total return potential, I'd classify this as low, with them usually returning about 3-4% to on average. There is a possibility that this does increase in the event of the US default like I mentioned before, but I still think that if I had to guess, it would be low. Now volatility. The volatility is pretty low and moderately consistent, but again, it's just consistently a lower return lately. As far as overall risk, risk is definitely higher when we start to venture outside the US, but with these being relatively safe and strong, broad international ETFs, I'd put the risk as medium. The next category is your basic broad index or foundational ETFs, something like VTI, which tracks the entire US stock market, or VU, which covers the S&P 500 or the 500 biggest companies by market cap in the United States. Obviously, I love this category and think that it should be a staple in everyone's portfolio. Now, as far as total return potential, I would give this one a medium designation. It's not expected to go through the roof, but also not underperform. As far as volatility, I would say volatility is low. Even though there are years where the market's up very high and sometimes negative, since 1957, when the S&P 500 was introduced, it has produced an average of about 10% appreciation per year. That's over 65 years of data. Data, so I like that consistency a lot. And as far as overall risk, I would definitely put this one as low. You're getting a very diversified fund either way you look at it, and overall the entire stock market, or at least the S&P 500, has done pretty well and has a pretty solid track record, even taking into account returns during recessions. The next category is obviously a fan favorite, especially over the last year or so, but also this year to date, it's getting absolutely crushed, and that's the dividend ETF. And of course, you all know my favorite is SCHD. This category is phenomenal because it's like you get a bonus. You get a share price appreciation, so your stock value goes up, and you get a dividend in the form of cash flow that you can either use as passive income, or you can reinvest right back into the ETF so that you get even more compound interest. For SCHD, the total return potential is definitely high. Since inception, the fund has had an average yearly appreciation of over 13%, and that's because you're getting a return with the share price, but then also the dividend too. And that dividend is not staying stagnant. It's growing along with the share price, which is not typical for an ETF. As far as volatility is concerned, this one I would say medium. 
partly because we only really have the bulk of data from the past 10 to 12 years, and the majority of that was a bull market. I'm confident that when we have 20 years of data, it's gonna show amazing stats, but for now, I'm gonna put this as medium. For the overall risk, I'm definitely gonna throw this one down as low, because while SCHD is down this year to date, these types of funds don't drop drastically like 50% or something due to the makeup of the value type companies within the fund. So now I'm gonna go over this last category and after this I'm gonna tell you exactly which one I would pick and which ETF would be the number one ETF that I would invest in if I could only invest in one forever. And this last category is going absolutely crazy with things like AI and technology just incredibly red hot right now. And that is the growth ETF. Sky's the limit for ETFs like this because for companies to survive they need to innovate and in this fund it's gonna be the most innovative companies that you'll ever find. As far as the total return potential for growth ETFs, this one is obviously very, very high. QQQ has generated an average yearly appreciation of almost 18% over the past 10 years. SCHG has had about a 14.5% average yearly appreciation over that time period, with companies like Nvidia, Tesla, Meta, and Microsoft absolutely crushing it with no end in sight, I definitely see some very high total return potential. Now as far as volatility, I see this is very high as well. We could have an outstanding year of 40% returns, but very easily these companies can be over leveraged or the technology can get beat by a competitor editor rendering the company obsolete in a flash. We could just as easily have a year with negative 40% returns. The overall risk here is definitely medium because still an ETF so it's not as risky as like individual growth stocks but since I'm rating each of these against each other as far as ETFs go this one is among the riskier so I will give this a high. Now if I'm looking at an ETF that I'm going to invest in forever and I only get to pick one I'm actually going to look at the category of overall risk. So unfortunately Unfortunately, I need to kick out international and growth because that risk is just a little too high if I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. Out of SCHD and VU, these are very, very solid funds, ones that I love, and they are my top two by far. But if I were to choose one forever, and I absolutely have to pick one, I'd have to go with the one that has the more long-term data, and that has weathered more storms. My pick today would be VU, but with more data and maybe five to 10 more years worth of SCHD, I expect that one to shine. The good news is that I don't have to pick one ETF and neither do you. And in this video, I go over the perfect number of ETFs and stocks that you should have in your investing portfolio. Check this video out now.